All right, so we have another example of a polynomial function. And again, I'm not giving you any information. So we have f of x equals 3x to the third minus 10x squared minus 27x plus 10. And we need to completely factor the function. We need to find all of the zeros. And we need to list all the intercepts. So there's only one thing that we can do right now without having to do a lot of work, and that is to find the y-intercept. And that's usually the one guy that a lot of students forget to write. So let's go ahead and do that. So we already know about the y-intercept, that x is 0. And when x is 0, all these guys go away except for 10. So at the very least, there's one point for you, right? Write the y-intercept. In order to find everything else, we need to look at finding that, um, that, that p over q stuff that we were mentioning before. Okay, so let's look at what, uh, yeah, let's do it down here. So let's consider p over q. Okay, so p over q, now keep in mind that p will be factors of this constant term 10. So the factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. And q is going to be a factor of your leading term. So my leading coefficient here is 3, so the factors of 3 are 1 and 3. So remember, you can do plus or minus here because we don't know if it's going to be positive or negative when it comes to these rational zeros. So we're going to list all of these possible combinations. So plus or minus. Start with the 1. 1 over 1 is 1. 1 over 3 is 1 third. All right. Then we go to 2. 2 over 1 is 2, and then 2 over 3. Move on to 5. So that's 5 over 1 and 5 over 3. And finally, we look at 10. So the combinations here are 10 over 1 and 10 over 3. So again, what we're saying is that if there's going to be a solution to that polynomial function that is rational, it has to be one of these guys, either positive or negative. Again, the rational zeros theorem doesn't tell us anything about solutions that are complex or irrational, you know, the ones that have uh, radicals in them. So let's do some quick uh, math here and see what we can come up with. The first guy to check is 1. Now we can do that by, well, you can, you're basically plugging 1 into the function, and this is not something I recommend for these. If I take the 1 and I plug it in, that just gives me 3 minus 10 minus 27 plus 10. And so if you combine all of that, really just combine those coefficients in the constant term, if the combination is 0, that means that x equals 1 is going to be a 0. But if I look here, that would give me a negative 7, then a negative 34, and you combine it with this, plus 10, it's not going to be 0. So we're going to take our little scrap piece of paper, and we're going to do synthetic division with these numbers to see which one's going to work. Because we just need to find one that works. Uh, since this is degree 3, we're supposed to have three solutions. If I can find one of them that works, then what I'm left with is something quadratic, and I know that I can handle that. And when you look at the instructions here, and it says factor completely, that means that there's this expectation that we're not going to have anything that's irrational or complex because it's saying factor completely, so we should be able to factor, right? So let's do this. We have synthetic division, and we're going to use negative 1. And let's see, we have 3, negative 10, negative 27, and positive. Now, I know this is not really neat. I'm just going to try to run through this very quickly because this is just trying to find one guy that works. So that's 3. Multiply is negative 3. Add is negative 13. Add is, or multiply is 13. That is negative 14. This is not working out right. Okay, so negative 1 is trash. The next guy up would be 1 third. I don't really want to use, I don't want to use one third. Let's try two. Let's see if two works. All right, so we're going to do synthetic division again. All right, so bring down the three. 
Multiply is six, add negative four. Multiply is negative, I don't like where this is going. Negative 35, negative 70. Uh, yeah, so clearly two does not work. Hmm. Well, let's try negative two, right? So let's do the same thing. Same synthetic division, but let's try negative two, right? And this is this is what I would do. I start with the smallest numbers. I try the positive one, and then I try the negative one. Then I go to the next smallest number. I try the positive one, then the negative one. Once I'm done with all of the integers, all of the, the whole numbers, then I go back and I try using the fractions. But I don't jump into the fractions. I'm going to save those for the end. All right, so let's see here. Bring down the 3. Multiply is negative 6. Add is negative 16. Multiply is 32. Add is 5. Multiply is negative 10. Oh, there we go. It only takes one. So now we know that negative 2 is one of the guys that works. So let's get to showing our work right here. So we used negative 2. We found that it works. So let's make this nice and neat. As though I'm going to turn this in for some kind of credit. So bring down the 3 times the k value, so that's negative 6. Combine is negative 16. Times that k value of negative 2, we get 32. Add to get 5. Multiply to get the negative 10 with a remainder of 0. So perfect, this is what we want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go from this guy, which was x to the third, and this becomes x squared. So we now have something that's quadratic. I'm going to take this guy off to the side and work it out. So 3x squared minus 16x plus 5 is equal to 0. So this is our quadratic equation that we want to solve. See, I told you we just have to get it down to something that's quadratic and then we're going to be okay. So we need to factor this guy. And if you want to, off to the side, you can work on the factorization for this. Okay. Again, just kind of scratch this out. It doesn't have to be nice and neat up here because you're just doing scratch work. Whoops. There we go. If you do the AC method, 3 times 5 is 15. Factors of 15 that add to 16 are 1 and 15. All right, so we're going to say that's minus 1x minus 15x plus 5. Sorry for how, you know, messy this is, but again, it's just scratch work. Here are the common factor is x, so 3x minus 1. Here are the common factor is negative 5, and you have 3x minus 1. So all together, this is your factorization. Yeah, it's messy, but this is what my scratch work looks like. And then I come over here and I say this factors as 3x minus 1 times x minus 5. So you see the slower I write, the neater it is, right? I have more control. It's, a lot, it's, it's more legible. And the neater it is, the more points I'm likely to receive on a test. So I'm just saying. Here if I solve this equation, we get x is equal to positive one-third, add the one, divide by three. Or from here, x is equal to five. So we now have all of our solutions, all of the zeros for this polynomial. But let's go back to the top and make sure that we answer this question correctly. Okay, so at the very top, it said to factor this guy completely. So when it says to factor, you're gonna write it like this. f of x equals, okay? Well, the first factor that we found is connected to the first zero that we found that worked for synthetic division. So I got a k value of negative two, which means the factor, when you backtrack, the factor is x plus two. Remember that the signs are going to be opposite, right? Now, I have my other two factors from the factorization that I did down here, right? So this was my quotient, this quadratic, and I factored it off to the side. So 3x minus 1, x minus 5 will finish 
this factorization. So 3x minus 1 times x minus 5. That is the complete factorization for this function. Now from here, we're going to list all of our zeros. Starting with the first one that we found, which was negative 2. And then the other two zeros that we found came from these factors. So we had the work down below on this page. So we have 1 third and we have 5. And you see how well this works out because if you look at the possible rational zeros, negative 2 shows up right here, 1 third is right here, and 5 is right here. So they were all they're all rational and they all fit in with that the rational zeros theorem which says if you have zeros that are rational they have to be among these guys. Now let's finish this. Uh, the last part here says list all intercepts so that's your y-intercept so your x-intercepts remember you get one for each real zero so that's going to be negative two comma zero this one is one third comma zero and finally we have five zero so in this problem we started with nothing but by using the rational zeros theorem we were able to get one guy that worked out and from that one guy we did the synthetic division and we turned something that was degree three into degree two and everything was nice and easy but then we had to make sure that we went back and we answered all of the questions correctly and completely. So when it says to factor, we are writing the factorization, right? Just like we've done factoring before. It's supposed to look like this. Zeros, you just list the zeros, right? Then you go to the intercepts. There's always going to be a y-intercept for these polynomial functions, okay? As we've mentioned before, and I'm going to say it again, the domain for a polynomial function is all real numbers which has to include zero, which means you have to cross the y-axis. So zero comma 10. Then for the x-intercepts, again, each real zero corresponds to an x-intercept. One third becomes one third zero, five corresponds to five comma zero. So there we go. Let's do one more example to wrap up this section and make sure that we're ready for that uh, second test.